Welcome! Episode 17 of Flameflash.net Podcast. I'm Flameflash, obviously. Hopefully you know me by now. And we're going to go ahead and get started. First off, I'd like to remind everybody, Flameflash on Twitter, Flameflash on the PSN. I'm Flameflash pretty much everywhere. Oddly, somebody else beat me to it on the Xbox Live system. So there I'm Flameflash82. But on Raptor, you can find me as Flameflash. And Facebook, you can find us as Flameflash.net, a fan page. Perfect place to stop by, or Twitter. And finally, feedback, questions, comments, podcast at Flameflash.net. Now that we've gotten the bookkeeping out of the way, let's get started. As always, we're going to start out with a little review of the games that I've hit this week. And first off, wow, World of Warcraft. And it's actually been pretty much a full week since I last played World of Warcraft. That's it. I did finally accomplish the goal that I had recently set for myself, so I now am the proud owner of the daily achievements for both fishing and cooking of all of the major alliance cities on four characters. Very easy to do it on a mage, or with a mage as your handler. This was Labor Day week and weekend, and it definitely felt that way. Not because it was quite the labor of love sometimes. Did touch on the new Super Mario Brothers for the Wii again. As I think I've mentioned in the past, little baby boy absolutely loves to get Yoshi and hop on Yoshi, and that's where he stays. Yep. So... That's about it. That's where he goes, it's where he sits, and then goes and falls down a hole. Mario Kart for the Wii. I also worked a little bit on trying to unlock further. Not much, but a little bit. Almost all my gaming happened on Saturday. Probably because we went out of town Sunday for Labor Day. But in that time, I was able to squeeze in a little bit of classic gaming and, and went and booted up my Mega Man X collection disc for the PlayStation 2. Hugely satisfying experience there. If you have a backwards compatible PS3 or if you happen to still have a PS2, first off, go get a PS3. Then... Uh, especially find one on eBay that's backwards compatible. That would be m my uh, biggest recommendation there. Then head on over and get this game. You get six Mega Man X games, the classics, the side scrollers. And I played through a little bit of both Mega Man X and X6. Why the jump between the first game in the series and the last game in this uh, last game on the PlayStation of the series? Well, just had a hankering for a nostalgia, I suppose. And Mega Man X didn't quite do it for me. I've played through the game enough times that nothing was new and fresh. So I flipped over to X6, and that game's still pretty fresh for me. Not even sure I've ever beaten it. I think 5 may have been the last Mega Man X game that I managed to beat. One reason for that probably being that 6... 6 is a direct sequel to 5. Most of the X games, there's a little bit of hinting back and forth of what's happening. There's a tiny bit of running story, but for the most part, you're on independent platforms. Six breaks that mold 
and tries to tack on some kind of sequel story. Well, if you didn't beat Mega Man X5 the way they assume you did, it completely screws it up. It screws up the experience for the player. Sure, it's neat to have a continuity for once, but I also am disappointed by that fact. Flipped to zero as soon as I could. Went and rescued him as soon as I could. Yes, you have to go rescue zero again. But after that, he definitely felt like his overpowered sword-wielding maniac self. And you can't go wrong with Zero. My favorite game so far of the X series is still probably Mega Man X4. Because you get the full game. You get two full games. It's kind of the Sonic and Knuckles lock-on technology functionality. Where you get Sonic 3 with Knuckles or Sonic. Or Sonic 2 with Knuckles or Sonic. And here you get Mega Man X 4 with either Zero or X. And you play through the full game as only one of them. 5 and 6 depart from that and so you get to choose what armor you're taking or if you're taking Zero. Now, I'm sorry, but I'd like to be able to play through the game as just one character. That is the one major loss in my mind of X5 and X6. And 7 and 8 for that matter, but I'm not going to touch on those at the moment because they're in 3D and I didn't really play them recently. A Sunday... I did get to go old school, however, because the Ambassador program finally kicked in. The 3DS Ambassador program finally kicked in. And you know what I got to therefore play? The original NES Metroid, the original Yoshi, the puzzle game, you know, where the various Mario characters drop down, you try to match them up or squash them between a top and a bottom half of a Yoshi egg. Donkey Kong Jr., Super Mario Brothers, The Legend of Zelda, classics. No, I didn't hit all of them yet. Wrecking Crew, for instance, I... Let's sit for now. Um, you can obviously tell I'm recording far too late than usual. Anyway, the 3DS program, Ambassador program, made it for me. Pure win. It's now expired, so I hope you got in on it. It's kind of like PlayStation Plus. Get in on it as soon as you can. Yes, I'm pretty sure you can actually still get a 3DS with that's enabled for the ambassadorship. You just have to be careful. You have to shop around. You have to buy used at this point. But it's still going to be worth it to get those free 10 games. And 10 more, eventually, of classic Game Boy Advance games. So you get your regular Metroid now, your original Metroid. And then, before the end of the year, we're promised Metroid Fusion. No, it's not as good as Super Metroid. But, it's darn close, in my opinion. Now, hopefully everybody out there is familiar with these games. Metroid. You play as Samus Aran. You run around the planet of Zebes, I believe it was. And you shoot and kill monsters and space pirates. And you go about your business and take on Mother Brain. Yoshi. I kind of already explained that one. Fun puzzle game. Kind of a short spurts kind of game. 
something that the 99 cent app crowd would actually probably appreciate. Yes, I recently did find out there's a 16-bit version. I only ever owned the 8-bit, the, the original NES version. That was okay for me. I didn't mind it. Certainly can't notice in a puzzle game that you're missing bits. The point of a puzzle game is to challenge, not to wow you with the graphics, after all. Donkey Kong Jr. is still Donkey Kong Jr. It's a little disappointing that we also didn't get a version of Donkey Kong, but given that the Game Boy version of Donkey Kong, com, blah, too late to be talking. The Game Boy version of Donkey Kong is already available on the 3DS eShop. Go grab that to complete your Donkey Kong portable collection. You can't go wrong with the Game Boy copy. You get the original levels, plus you get a whole lot more. Super Mario Brothers. Does that really need an explanation or a review or anything else for that matter? Great game. No, the graphics don't hold up, but the difficulty does. It's still as satisfying and time-crunching as it ever was. The Legend of Zelda. I never owned this game. I played it at friends' houses. I think I remember why I never wanted this game or owned this game, but I did finally, finally find the first dungeon and beat it. But that's as far as I've gotten. I can't find anything. That's my biggest complaint with that game. It's too open. Especially for that era. So you just don't know where you're going. You need a map. The sun the oldest went and played Terraria I've covered that as well as Harry Potter Lego Harry Potter years one through four you don't know Jack yes I've already mentioned you don't know Jack however with four people playing locally it's a whole new ball game or trivia game they throw you throw you curveballs, they throw you screws, and they do it strategically. It's kind of hard to only screw your player two when there are only two people playing, but when you have four sitting down, most excellent. It's quite amusing too watching as three people go for the totally wrong answer and then another hitting the right one or getting screwed and then nailing them with regretting that they screwed you boy you don't know Jack isn't work safe or appropriate to even talk about it seems oh well that play session that play session helped score a couple of new trophies for me in you don't know Jack so that was nice discovered the gauntlet of fire is still a very weird trophy don't understand it 50 times screws that's pretty straightforward wife tried portal the original Portal on the Xbox. She wasn't overly fond. Um, the kids enjoyed running around a little bit. Uh, the oldest son set up, you know, the Portal Tunnel, so you were just constantly, constantly falling. But wife just couldn't get into it. I can understand why. It's She needs more story some more pull on why in the world you're here that and she couldn't really understand GLaDOS 
which is a little surprising to me, but she couldn't understand him. If you can't understand the computer mind mocking you through the entire game, some of the game's lost. It just is. Finally, The Sims 3 has a new freebie Halloween pack that you can go download. So go do it. Just go. Go do it. Open a new tab and go do it. Finally, in gaming news. Old news at this point, but World of Warcraft 4.3. Your worgen are getting horse mounts. It's about time. Wife absolutely hates the worgen racial run mount. Where you, you get on on all fours and you run like a wolf all over the place. You look more like a, huh, bad pun, but a hopped up frog on caffeine, just bouncing along the road. Maybe it's my graphics card, I don't know. I did also finally get my green proto-drake, my second green proto-drake. Those darn oracles in Sholazar Basin, I was finally lucky with an egg. That also sounds awkward. Rewind if you were just joining us. Also, the PlayStation Network yesterday updated. Go forth, follow my advice, sign up for PlayStation Plus, and you get Altered Beast. You know, that classic... You get Astro Tripper, some kind of a uh, scrolling shooter. Bashi Blocks, Jet Moto, an original PlayStation title. And Plants vs. Zombies. Yeah. You get Plants vs. Zombies. That has to be the highlight of this month's update. It's exciting to me because that's one step closer to fully transitioning off of the Xbox. I really wish I could totally, but I've learned my lesson. I don't play Xbox Live, so there's absolutely no reason for me to subscribe to it. And with no reason to subscribe to Xbox Live and pay that extra monthly fee, there's no reason to get Xbox games if they're multi-platform. Why not get free online play without the bad company of everyone and their uncle having a headset? So it's great to see Plants vs. Zombies come over to uh, the PlayStation side. We also have Nintendo announcing some kind of weird 3DS boat for the 3DS. You know how the 3DS only has one thumbstick on the left side? Well, the orig original intention was for you to tilt and rotate the 3DS because it has a built-in gyroscope like the Wii so that you can manipulate things like you would with a right thumbstick. Well, this 3DS boat throws all of that out because you clip your 3DS into this oversized monstrosity. I love the name 3DS Boat, so I'm stealing it from my GN. And you get a second thumbstick far on the right there. Cool. I don't really understand why Nintendo couldn't have just, oh, I don't know, released it with one? But it's neat that they're finally doing it. I also just know, and I'm afraid, that I probably won't be there 
for us to see it actually come out. I just... Nintendo has a bad history of failed accessories. We fit balance board, for instance. I don't see that many games coming out still for it. Didn't see that many in the first place. We Motion Plus. Yes, it's built into all of the new remotes now, but I already have four remotes. Why do I need to get it? It's pointless. For me, but the 3DS gets two thumbsticks now. Not bad, but unless they bundle it with a game and that's you know one of the must-have games, and start actually um, bundling the second thumbstick into say a 3DS Lite. That'd be the way to go. Of course, I don't really want to buy another peripheral. But until I have a game or want a game that has it or needs it, there's really no need. I'm going to touch on something new this time around that I don't usually hit. Comics. DC Universe Restarted from scratch. They're starting over with episode one. Justice League was last week. A few more have released this week and they're very very tempting. The Batgirl especially is very tempting for me as is the Action Comics number one and I have no idea which Batman I should start things out with. There's Detective Comics. There's quite a few different Batman comics. More so than the Superman ones. Don't know why. But the Justice League one, everybody liked it in the household. Oldest son, oldest daughter wife, myself. It was a great intro to the relaunch. Finally, in typical geek rant fashion, it was brought to my attention just tonight, actually, that Netflix streaming is limited. I haven't tested it out for myself yet. But if you've started a movie, if your account has started a movie on one device, another account or another television can't also use your device or subscription. So you can't have two movies running at the same time, one on the iPad and one on the PlayStation, and keep everybody happy anymore. doesn't make any sense to me because they just raised the price and so now I'm going to have to be either going elsewhere or paying more and so far I'm just not finding a go elsewhere option which is disappointing well I think that's going to close us off I don't understand why Netflix is doing what they're doing. They're shooting themselves in the foot, especially since they're having some stars network problems at the moment. But if there's any feedback, comments, at FlameFlash on Twitter, or podcast at FlameFlash.net. And here goes FlameFlash, nodding off.